Housing New Zealand Corporation has a number of properties that have foundation issues, damage during the earthquakes. What we need to do is find out what the best methodologies are to fix those foundations and the cost of doing that repair work. Well, what we need to do is get the houses back up and running for our tenants. That's the, the end result that we're after. So to do that, working with the structural engineers, the geotech engineers, will give us the information that we need to let our contractors know what those methodologies are and the results will feed into fixing them back up again, basically. Um, so essentially the geotech engineer is involved to understand the engineering parameters of the ground um, so that we can ensure that rebuilds or repairs on top of it um, are appropriate for the conditions. We're trying to provide primarily information about the condition of the ground and the behaviour of the ground. So that starts with looking at how the ground has actually performed um, throughout the earthquakes, looking for evidence of damage in the land, cracking, um, liquefaction ejector, those kind of things. Uh, we'll follow that with an actual site investigation. Um, we'll use a number of techniques from uh, ranging from shallow handheld stuff, which extends probably two to three metres, um, through to deep drilling information, um, which are CPTs and boreholes, and they will extend probably 10 to 15 metres. The information that we gather um, throughout the investigations will then be used by the structural engineer. So we'll um, tell them about the performance of the site, um, what likely ground conditions they will have to be doing their foundation repair or their foundation rebuild in, um, so they understand that um, the conditions so that they can appropriately design something that suits the site. The information that the structural engineer generally provides is really threefold. First and foremost, it's to define whether a property is uh, safe to occupy on an ongoing basis, that there's no hazards to the occupants of the house from falling masonry or chimneys or gables. Secondly is to give a clear definition of the structural damage of a property so that the insurers and their contractors can quantify what the repair costs are for that. And thirdly and most, and most importantly is to provide repair options uh, which can be quite varied for any property uh, such as a property like this to return a property to its pre-earthquake condition. This is a good example of structural damage to a foundation and associated veneer damage. The government guidelines is a very comprehensive document which gives guidance on acceptable tolerance levels, uh, what, what to look for when inspecting properties like this and also a range of options for repairing the foundations and the veneer damage to return the property back to at least the condition it was in before the seismic activity.